Before I even start this video, I'm going to say a disclaimer. If you don't like talking about or hearing about vomiting, you should click off this video now. Even though it's in the title, so she would, so you would have known when you clicked on it anyway. But yeah, click off if you're like vomit phobia. Anyway, as you can probably tell from the title, today I'm going to talk about quite a rare illness that I have, which is known as cyclical vomiting syndrome, which yes, it is as disgusting as it sounds. So as I said, click off now. But I'm just gonna talk you through kind of what it is because I feel like there's not actually that much information on the internet from sufferers, if that makes sense. So I feel like it'd be nice to make a little video and kind of share, maybe make a little community if anyone else out there suffers from the same thing as I do. And yeah, it's basically just like a story time of how I got diagnosed and stuff. And like, yeah, what it is, basically. So I got my like notes on my phone so I don't miss anything, because like, to be honest, it is a really long story. And I'll try and make this video as quick and short as possible. Anyway, first of all, I'm just gonna read you like what if you google it what it comes up as because that basically explains what it is better than I can explain it because every person who has it from what I understand is slightly different so this is basically the general summary. So cyclical vomiting syndrome is a chronic functional condition of unknown cause characterised by recurring attacks of intense nausea, vomiting and sometimes abdominal pain, headaches or migraines. My mum now thinks retrospectively that I have always had this. The one and only time I've ever been admitted to hospital for vomiting was when I was a baby and I couldn't keep my liquids down so my mum had to take me to hospital. Luckily, touch wood, there's no other wood close to me. I haven't been hospitalized so far for it since I've been diagnosed and hopefully never will be. Anyway, my first recollection of what I would class as an episode because it isn't something that's like constant anymore for me. It's definitely a recurring thing rather that's in episodes rather than constant. First episode I remember was at the end of year nine. So in year nine in the UK, at the end of it, you would be 14. So my school was going on a day trip up to London to the Natural History Museum and also the Science Museum, I believe. I remember it specifically because it was a school trip and I was quite excited to go. But, however, during the night I felt really, really ill and I basically ended up vomiting 20 times, each exactly 20 minutes apart, which is quite intense, very intense. Like, I don't have a bathroom near my bedroom, so I was on our, like, sofa bed downstairs. My mum actually, like, made the sofa into the sofa bed, which we don't do very often. So that's kind of when I'd pinpoint my first ever episode. But it really kind of started properly for me when I got into sick form. So any viral illness I got that's like a cold, I would be having an episode. So an episode for me is basically almost constant vomiting for days, like, days on end and it's just horrible and like it comes with a bit of a headache I know that a lot of the time if you like google it a lot of people say they become unconscious which I've never been unconscious from it but I've definitely been unintelligible because of it I know once when I had an episode at my grandparents my mum went out for dinner and left my grand in charge of me and she was just like I don't understand a word you're saying whereas to me I, in my head I'm thinking I'm being really clear but obviously I'm not and then the other thing that sets it off for me is also like high anxiety and stress which I went through a lot of in sick form especially towards the beginning and I'd actually say this is one of the main reasons that I didn't get diagnosed sooner because my GPs would just keep like fobbing it off as oh yeah some people feel sick when they have anxiety which is legitimate but at the same time because of my anxiety to the doctors this it was kind of hiding what was actually wrong with me, which is just kind of annoying. And another thing that can set it off is high levels of excitement. So if you have seen in the news in the last couple of years, the headline, girl allergic to happiness, that girl that was in those headlines, and there's been other children as well, but I can think of one particular, has the same thing as me. And an example in my case was my 18th birthday. So my 18th birthday weekend, I was having a party on the Saturday, my birthday was on the Sunday, and I was having a meal out on the Sunday. So in the lead up to the Saturday, 
I basically had to have the whole week off school because I was just vomiting and yeah the trigger for that was that I was about to turn 18 and I was really excited for my party and my like dinner as well but because of that like I still wasn't feeling very well on Saturday I was well enough to have my party but it means that like I have absolutely no pictures from my 18th birthday because I felt so ill I didn't want any pictures of me so that's just like one of the ways in which it can affect you anyway when I'm having an episode the reason that in a lot of cases of people especially I feel like I've seen quite a few articles from like women who have it in the states and it's not like specified to like men or women but from what I've seen women seem to talk about it a bit more than any men that have it I haven't really seen any men have it yeah definitely for both the genders but it's that I literally cannot keep anything down a sip of water will make me vomit which is why it's like quite dangerous and also why I know in the states they do hospitalize people really quickly with it my like episode normally breaks about three hours before my mum's ready to take me to the hospital she'll be like right if you haven't kept water or LucasAid Sport is my go-to drink when I'm ill because obviously it has like salt and sugar and stuff in so that's my ill drink and I always have always 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 have spares in the house and at uni as well but yeah my episodes always break just before that point where I probably would need to be put on a drip so yeah again touch wood that will never happen and also another like characteristic of it is that I know a lot of my friends when they're like feeling ill so like so the best example is when they're hungover and they'll go and vomit and then they'll feel so much better afterwards and they won't feel ill at all or maybe just have a bit of a headache or something that does not happen to me I'll be sick and I'll feel better for about 30 seconds and then the intense nausea starts again it's a really intense nausea and when I was in sick form I had this nausea absolutely non-stop which meant that like I wasn't eating properly and stuff because I was just so scared that I was just gonna bring anything I ate up which like eventually was the reason that my mum like pushed the doctors a bit more to get me seen by a consultant instead of just a GP. Yeah, as I said, I was fobbed off by the doctors a lot and then another big reason for making sure that I went and saw someone who was like a specialist in the gastroenterological, gastroenter, gastroenterology, in the gastro area was because I was missing a week off school every single month which when you're doing A levels that's a lot that's a lot of work to catch up on and yeah I definitely struggled with my A levels because of that because I was missing so much school so it was really important to make sure that we like kind of got me sorted anyway when I eventually did get referred I got referred to my local hospital and we did see a really nice um, doctor there but he in the adult department but he said to me, he was like, your GP's already tried you on, my GP had already tried me on a Meprazole and Mebeverine, I believe. And it hadn't done anything for me, it hadn't worked. And he was like, that's all I can do for you. Because I don't know what it is, but he was like, I do have a little tinsy feeling that it's this, that it's cyclical vomiting syndrome. However, I don't know much about it because it is a rare illness. Like, I'm sure that loads of people have it just undiagnosed, you just think you're a bit susceptible to vomiting, but it is a rare illness. So like, obviously not every doctor knows how to treat it and diagnose it properly. So he referred me to a colleague in paediatrics gastro who is a specialist in cyclical vomiting syndrome, that's literally all he does. Anyway, when I got the referral through someone somewhere, I've not read the referral properly and had referred me to a completely different doctor in another hospital that's miles away. Anyway, we still went to the appointment because it's all like, it's if you get a doctor's appointment, you just go and see if they can, if they have any other ideas and could help you. Anyway, he again was just as bad as GP. He fobbed it off my anxiety. He really wasn't very good, would not recommend. Definitely wouldn't recommend. Anyway, my mum took me back to school that day and I was sat in biology about 40 minutes after I got back from school and my mum texted me and she's like, I'm picking you up right now because I've just had a phone call from um, the consultant that I was meant to see and he has an appointment in like an hour and a half and we're going now. So yeah, that was like a really good bit of luck. He'd had a, like a cancellation on the day and he was just looking through his referrals and he saw my referral and yeah from whatever the first doctor wrote he obviously thought that I did have cyclical vomiting syndrome and he wanted to see me even though he really shouldn't have done because 
I at this stage was above paediatrics age. I might have still been 16 when I first saw him, but I was very close to being 17 and locally 16 is the maximum age for paediatrics. But anyway, because I was a special case, I got seen by him and he was like, yeah, yeah, after you've done like the examination and stuff. I mean like by examination, I mean like they fill your stomach and then take temperature, that kind of thing. And then also one thing that is linked to cyclical vomiting syndrome is hypermobility. So he like got my hand and got my thumb and did this with it and I don't know if you can like see but anyway my thumb can touch my wrist which apparently means I'm hypermobile which I learned that day. Anyway so he was like I'm gonna get you sent off for tests because it's one of those illnesses that's very similar to chronic fatigue ME where you can't diagnose it from a blood test you have to basically get rid of anything else that could possibly be wrong so the first test I had was an ultrasound on my stomach and that showed nothing wrong with my stomach then I had <laughs> I had I had to have like a radioactive substance I had to ingest it and then pictures of my stomach got taken like every hour or something so I had to eat radioactive mashed potato and then lie down on a thing with a big thing over me and it like scanned my stomach and took pictures of it and again that showed normal digestive process I guess and then the other thing I had to have was an endoscopy which is where they stick a camera down your throat which was possibly the worst hospital experience of my life a long story short the staff weren't very nice they really didn't use their brains when sedating me and the camera ended up making me have a vomiting episode so yeah from that one test it showed absolutely nothing wrong with like my digestive tract but it did make me have an episode which you know just kind of more solidifies what was wrong with me in the first place so I eventually got diagnosed with cyclical vomiting syndrome I'm just looking at my like list to make sure I've got everything so as I'd already been put on mebeverine and whatever the other one I said was I can't remember the name of it now I only said it 10 minutes ago as well anyway he tried me on a different medication which is the medication I am on now and that has I've been on that for I'd say at least two years now at least two years now and it's definitely definitely been helping I since then I've had a lot less episodes than I had before I am um, and a whole year when I had my gap year without an episode which like that was such a big achievement for me even though I have no control of it over it like it was still a proud moment um I've definitely had some more episodes since I've been at uni I had I got freshers flu and that made me really really ill because with the medication I'm on I also can't take Lemsip to dry up a cold which means that viral illness like colds does still set me off if I get a bad one simply because I can't take decongestant so obviously I get like loads of mucus and stuff in my stomach and it's a bit gross, very gross. But yeah that's kind of what it is and how I like my journey into getting diagnosed with it. I don't really know what else to say in this video but if you are watching this and either think you might have it or do have it or are just generally curious about cyclical vomiting syndrome because it is a bit of a weird one like I hadn't heard of it until I got diagnosed with it and it really is quite a rare one yeah if you have any questions do let me know I'm thinking I might do kind of a video on how I cope with it at uni and then yeah maybe a story time on my endoscopy experience because that was just traumatic anyway if you've sat all the way through this listening to me talk about vomit for it says 16 minutes and 50 seconds then congratulations please subscribe to my channel it would mean the world to me please don't forget to like this video and as i said if you've got any questions or you suffer from cyclical vomiting syndrome and just want to be friends comment down below and i will see you in my next video which hopefully will be slightly less disgusting